I would not recommend them bringing into the kitchen line. Otherwise, just keep them back. If they're back, keep them back. Battles up and welcome to episode 21 of the Pickleball Gurus podcast. I'm Rainy Maniply and I'm here with Prem Carnot, the Pickleball Guru, the world's premier pickleball coach and author of the two best-selling books, Smart Pickleball and Drop Shot Till You Drop. Hi, Guru Nation. Welcome again to our 21st episode. And before we get into this episode, tell us about your recent travels up the East Coast, Prem. You had a clinic and a boot camp in Richmond. Yes, I did go to Richmond, uh, Virginia, and uh, got a wonderful uh, group of pl uh, players in, uh, for the clinic as well as the boot camp. Uh, rest assured, uh, we, uh, we kept our um, CDC protocols and uh, uh, social distancing as much as the mask and also all the, all the, all the uh, you know, things we needed to have in terms of uh, keeping your hands clean. And um, so it went really well. In fact, uh, after I returned back from Richmond, uh, Richmond I just did, uh, I did a, a COVID test to make sure that uh, I didn't infect anyone or not get infected. <laughs> and happy to tell you that I got the results today and I am negative. So uh, I, I know that I have not inflicted uh, any any disease to anyone or do I uh, contracted it from someone? Excellent. That's actually wonderful to know. Now, as we get into this, it's a shot that no one talks about. And what I'm referring to here is the fourth shot. Certainly there's lots of talk about the serve, the return and the third shot. And you'll even discuss, I'm sure the fifth and seventh shot, but there's really little discussion that anyone talks about the fourth shot. First of all, where should you be for the fourth shot, Prane? Well, for the fourth shot, I would probably say you've got to be at the at the non-volley zone line as much as possible. Uh, you know, that means uh, if you had hit a perfectly good second shot, that means uh, both uh, you and your partner are at the at the kitchen line, and uh, that's the best place to be uh, with already one partner already at the kitchen line, and after the return, which is the second shot, uh, you're normally at the kitchen line. So that's where you are supposed to be. So that's right. On your second shot, you should do everything to ensure that you're at the line joining your partner for the fourth shot. So refresh everyone's memory about how and why you should set yourself up on the return or the second shot to set yourself up for the fourth shot. Well, um, as I've always explained this one before, a high lofty return will allow you enough time to get to that non volley zone line safely, knowing that the team which is serving has to let the ball bounce uh, to hit their, their third shot. Um, and so it allows you enough time to be at the line safely and, um, and uh, start dominating the, the kitchen line. Now for the four shot, assuming that you and your partner are at the line and set, keyword being set, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. What do you do when the third shot comes? We'll start with what to do if a third shot is a drive. Well, if it's a, uh, if it's a drive, uh, uh, most probably uh, I would uh, definitely recommend it, you to volley it right really at the feet of your opponents because they are still coming in with the drive and try and hit it at their feet and keeping them away from the kitchen line. As I said, the team which dominates the kitchen line wins. And so if your opponents are not there as much as possible, if it's a third ball drive, then keep them back as much as possible. Volley it back at their feet. So you're not an advocate of trying to drop them on this case, like trying to drop it at the kitchen if they're both at the baseline. Absolutely not. Uh, as I often jokingly say, unless or otherwise, if you have an opponent with the knee braces out there and hobbling around, I would not recommend them bringing into the kitchen line. Otherwise, just keep them back. If they're back, keep them back. And I always say in a situation like that, you have five possible outcomes and four of them are bad if you try and drop them and only one of them is good. Um, so you want to play the percentages. You have a better chance of keeping them back with a volley than you do 
trying to bring them in where all other, all other types of bad things that can happen. Like you can put it into the net or you can actually bring them in to where you lose your advantage of the kitchen. That's right. Um, yeah, by keeping them back, as I always say, is like you're forcing them to hit a better shot to get in. And uh, by keeping them back, uh, you, you have still the advantage because you're at the kitchen line and forcing them to hit a better shot to get in. And what do you do if they're dropping the ball or they're trying a third shot drop and it's not, and I repeat the operative word here, is not a good drop? As again, I would say is take it in the air and volley it right, right at their feet. Keep them away from that kitchen as, few, as much as possible. And if you can reach it uh, and uh, without, without obviously crossing the plane of the non-volley zone and able to um, volley it back at the, to their feet, that's a great shot if it's a bad drop shot. Or when, I, when, I, when we mean by bad drop shot is something which is deeper, it might land in the kitchen, but it's a deeper ball than just volley it back, take it in the air and hit it back at their feet. And at the pro level, you remember a match where the receiving team did exactly that, and the serving team did something like 10 drops, but they just kept keeping them back. I think you were joking that they were doing like the 17th shot drop or the 19th shot drop or something like that. That's right. Um, it was actually a match where uh, it was, uh, I think it was uh, Matt Wright and uh, Dave Weinbach playing against uh, Altaf Merchant and uh, I'm trying to remember the other gentleman's name. Uh, he was staying at the back and Maltap was already at the kitchen line, but they never actually hit to him because they knew his hands were very quick. So they just kept the other guy back uh, as much as possible. And uh, he kept on trying to drop it. And um, each one of those were deeper and like, against players like Matt Wright and Dave Weinbach, who, who have great hands and great reach. Uh, it was difficult to drop as precisely as possible, but uh, he stayed back and uh, and tried as much as possible to hit a perfectly great drop and get in. Now, what do you do when it's a good drop? In this case, your options are reduced a bit, yes? Absolutely. At that point, it all depends on, again, where your opponents are. If the opponents are, uh, if they had a great drop shot and have, they made it to the kitchen line, and in that point, then the only option at that point is to try and dink it back. Uh, and uh, if it is obviously if they have dropped a perfectly great drop shot and it's still hanging back, get it back to their feet. Do not invite them to the party, as I always say. Keep them away from that kitchen line. But if they are at the kitchen line, they've had a perfectly great drop shot um, where you're supposed to wait for the ball to bounce and then take it off the bounce in the kitchen, and at that point, uh, your dink battle starts. You start dinking and trying to wait for the opportunity. So that's uh, the best option on the fourth shot uh, if your opponents are already at the kitchen line. Everyone gets to see my cat now. That's, the, that's <laughs> Oliver. That's Nonami. Nonami, there that's it no is. That's Nonami. Not being very happy, but being loud. Now, let's say that you're the receiving team and you're the only one at the line and your partner has a habit of hanging back and not getting to the line. What should you do then? Keep hitting it to the person who was behind. <laughs> That's as simple as that. I'm talking about on the fourth shot. On the fourth shot, there are possibility. It's like if, uh, if in a recreational play, it might be a little different and in a competitive play, maybe you might, the person who's at the line might want to poach that ball or, you know, uh, grab that ball before it reaches your partner who's uh, hanging back. Is that what you're making allusion to, Randy? That's exactly right. Because I always say that, especially on the four shot, you look to poach because even though your partner may be in the process of getting to the line, your partner may not even be set and still be in motion when that third shot comes. Uh -huh. So in order to prevent your partner from making a mistake, I always recommend that uh, you actively look for the poach on that one. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's a good time to poach, especially if your partner is hanging back and you have to try and grab a ball, which is uh, going towards him or her, then it is a good time to actually poach. And we'll talk more about poaching in a later episode because I don't mean, I don't believe we've had an episode on poaching yet. Have we, Prane? 
I don't think so. We've definitely written a few number of articles, but I don't think we have actually done an episode on poaching. We'll definitely do that. Okay. And maybe in the next episode, I think it's about time to have a Q&A episode. So anyone that has a pickleball question, whether it's rules or play or anything else related to pickleball, uh, shoot me an email, randy at thepickleballguru.com. I'll also have my email address down in the show notes and go ahead and send us a question and we'll get them answered on the next podcast or webinar, whichever way you want to refer to it as. And if you want to develop a good four shot with some poaching thrown in, we've got a boot camp coming up in Charlotte on August 21st through the 24th with only four spots left. In Denver at the end of September with only two spots left. Sacramento in October, Tucson in November, Costa Rica in December. That's 2020. In 2021, we've got three Vero Beach boot camps in January and February. And then in May of 2021, there's Richmond, and we've only got two spots left for that boot camp. For camps in the States, use coupon code PODCAST for $500 off. And we also have two sessions of Boot Camp Express that are available in Vero Beach in January. Boot Camp Express is the more affordable alternative boot camp. It's only $5.97 for 12 plus hours of coaching. Plus, if you're coming with a partner, you can use coupon code PARTNER for $100 off. Check out our clinic page and learn how to win the first and how to win the point in the first three shots. And maybe we should add the first four shots now. Check out our clinic page. Can't come out, but still want to support the guru. Check out our gear page or purchase one of his best-selling books. Prem is wearing some gear right now. He's got his Smart Pickleball t-shirt on, plus his Smart Pickleball hat. And at your gear page, you can find other cool merchandise, like this Heartbeat Pickleball t-shirt that I have. Links to all this is available in the show notes. Head on over to pickleballguru.com and sign up for Prem's newsletter for absolutely free. You'll get lots of tips, tricks, strategies, and more, and lots of other free stuff. That's all I have, Prem. That's all I have for now, too. I'm excited to to be in Charlotte uh, next month and looking forward to, I know there's a big clinic and uh, definitely join us in Charlotte. And uh, if you can and uh, enjoy uh, a good time there as well as Denver is another beautiful setting in, in September and the Sacramento and Tucson later on, as I said, Costa Rica. I think there's some more spots left in Costa Rica too, right? Right. Okay. Um, anyhow, uh, as I always say, go have fun on a pickleball code. And remember, it's only pickleball. Yeah, the only thing I'll add is that the um, Charlotte is in August. Don't worry about the heat because we are on indoor courts in Charlotte during the, during the August boot camp. And we will definitely keep the strict uh, um, protocols in terms of um, social distancing and keeping uh, everyone safe. Yep. Absolutely. And now that's all I have. So everyone go out and enjoy pickleball. Thank you, Randy. Thank See you, you on the next episode. All right. Take care.